the trends that we have seen for the last seven months now, uh, the first half of the year and the six weeks into this quarter, uh, it makes us believe that the trend is continuing and even getting stronger. Uh, unless something comes in the way which we don't know today, it all looks uh, very positive and the beginning of an upcycle for uh, the hospitality sector. Now, I just want to get in a better understanding of the overall margins because on a sequential basis, there's been a slight dip. Um, the costs have increased this time around and then there's been a slight decrease in your ARR on a Q on Q basis. Um, but you remain on track for a 33% margin for FY25. If you could just elaborate on uh, your margin picture. Yeah, these, uh, the guidance that we have given under our strategy of 2025, uh, re we remain um, uh, confident of achieving 33% uh, EBITDA margin by uh, 2025, a, a portfolio of 300 plus hotels, um, and also a very balanced portfolio where 50% of our portfolio would have operating leases or owned assets, and 50% of the portfolio uh, driven by management, uh, management contracts or a fee-based business, as we call it. Um, at the same time, we'll continue to grow our new businesses, which is uh, the Cumin uh, under home delivery and uh, quick service restaurants, uh, Ama on our homestay front, as well as uh, Ginger in our Lean Lux category. So we remain confident. And, you know, as you said yourself, Q2 is the weakest quarter. And for us, it has been a very strong one because it's the first time we made profits uh, if we go down the last 11 years in the second quarter, we never hit a margin more than 17% uh, in the second quarter. So we have come at 25 plus, which is good. Of course, quarter on quarter Q1 was a uh, little aided through certain one-off events, uh, which uh, created a very strong uh, margin development in Q1, especially with the IPL happening in India in April and May in, in the cities of Mumbai, where we have significant presence, uh, and, and Pune also. So, so generally, we feel that now we enter into a more interesting phase with international travel picking up, expected to go back as of January to pre-COVID level, uh, India assuming the presidency of the G20, so more government delegations coming in, more activities happening on that front. And also, this is the time when the wedding season uh, kicks in. This is the time uh, when the festivities for Christmas, New Year's commence. And all in all, uh, the outlook remains strong and positive. All right, understood. So that's the, the reason uh, for the slight margin dip QOQ. But speaking of those international properties, um, the operations at Pierre have registered a cash loss, I understand, of about 30 crore rupees uh, versus a cash profit QOQ. And operations at St. James Court London, they reported a free cash flow positive of about 14 crores. I just want to understand what the outlook is on international properties and in particular for the U. Okay, with what we're seeing play out, are there any concerns on, uh, you know, operations being impacted? Uh, actually, London still remains very strong. It has not yet come to the pre-COVID level, but it's very close to it. So we are clocking around 96% of our pre-COVID uh, level. And um, I think there is very little concern for us on... Uh, on London, our property, uh, both both the assets, the St. James Court and the 51 Buckingham Gate, uh, we had uh, put in the new chambers in, in, in London as our private membership club. We built all-day dining. We are uh, doing uh, the new Chinese there, the House of Ming. Kulon, our uh, Michelin star restaurant, is also very popular in, in the city for both locals as well as uh, international travelers. So I remain very positive. Uh, on London and US is beginning to show strong signs of recovery, both in San Francisco and in, and in New York. And one which I'm also eagerly, uh, or we are eagerly looking forward for the performance is November to February are very strong months for Cape Town. And uh, you might recall, we uh, acquired 100% stake in Cape Town uh, uh, almost two years ago. 
uh, and um, or, or a year and a half ago. And uh, this should uh, be a, a uptick of the next, you know, like whatever 70, 80, 90 days uh, should be very strong uh, for Cape Town because this is their high season. So all in all positive, not so positive is the news on, um, on Sri Lanka. Uh, there we are lagging behind the pre-COVID level. Uh, but Maldives and Dubai on the international front remain very strong also. So uh, we should expect some positive uptick in Q3 coming in from both UK as well as US and aided also by strong performance in South Africa. Okay, that's a word on international operations, but let's talk about the high margin businesses. The Lean Lux segment, Ginger, you reported in the first half uh, an EBITDA margin of about 39%. Um, and then there was Amma Stays, which had a strong top line growth, 100 bungalows as well, and Cumin, which has scaled uh, quite significantly. What is the contribution outlook from these businesses and in particular for Ginger? What are you looking at uh, achieving by way of margins for the next quarter? I wouldn't make a comment just for quarter on quarter basis. I think uh, all in all, we think, uh, and that's why we acquired uh, uh, six months ago, 100% shareholding in Roots Corporation where Ginger sits. Um, and I think it's going to be a very profitable year for Ginger. Uh, the EBITDA for the first half of this year is already higher than the entire EBITDA of last year. And, um, and we all know that the first half uh, is not as strong as the second half. So I think uh, we're looking forward to uh, a good performance from Jinja. On top of that, uh, till 31st of March, we expect to open five more Jinja properties. So our total will uh, exceed 60 Jinja hotels in operation and also some uh, other guest houses that we service uh, of PCS. So I think uh, Ginger is um, is poised to grow and grow profitably and 39% uh, is only the beginning. The margins we are looking at Ginger, uh, which are the new ones, which we call the Lean Lux Ginger, uh, which is half of our portfolio very soon. There we are looking at uh, margins north of 50%. So this is a mixed thing of the old and the new. And as and when all the hotels are upgraded and the new ones open, uh, we are definitely looking at a much higher margin at this, uh, at this positioning. Uh, and that's what it drives internationally uh, in comparable brands uh, across the globe. Okay, that's good to note. What about the outlook, Mr. Chatwal, in terms of your room revenues, F&B revenues and your free cash flow generation? It was about 181 crore rupees this quarter. <laughs> Yes, so in the first half, it's getting close to, you know, 400, 383, if I remember correctly, it's the total free cash flow. So our focus remains on strong free cash flows. Um, our focus is uh, not to take on debt. Our focus is um, uh, to keep increasing uh, our revenues also, uh, not only through the new uh, properties, through new businesses we add, but also through uh, right measures we undertake uh, on our existing assets uh, by doing comprehensive asset management of our portfolio uh, and also at the same time leveraging our legacy brands like Chambers, uh, like our Chinese brands, House of Ming, Golden Dragon, Italian, uh, Trattoria or the newly launched uh, Paper Moon uh, or Seven Rivers or you know House of Nomad, the uh, list can go on. Uh, to keep um, increasing and optimizing our revenue also in existing assets. Okay. Um, what about any updates or clarification from your front in terms of bidding for the Ashok Hotel? Nothing at the moment. Okay. Um, if you could just walk us through, you know, wrapping it up in terms of the long-term growth outlook, because you said that October to December has been the strongest quarter for the company, followed by the Jan to March quarter. And now the third quarter is actually going to set the tone for full FY23. And all signs are pointing that it's going to be a good holiday season and a good year. So if you could just give us a little bit of an indication as to what we can expect. Well, whatever uh, the current indicators are for the last six weeks, we are uh, 
continuing on the trajectory of um, of 20% plus growth in the top line uh, um, as a sector. And within that, we are the largest hospitality ecosystem. So we should be able to gain higher market share. So I think uh, uh, if nothing else comes in the way uh, in the following um, six, eight weeks, uh, I think Q3 uh, will be a very strong Q3 for the sector in general and uh, and definitely within the sector, we are well positioned uh, to benefit in particular if, this, if the going keeps the way it has been for the last six weeks. Okay, and if I might, apologies, I'm just going to squeeze in one more question in terms of the overall fundraising plans after the QIP. What's the latest? I think uh, we are very well capitalized and uh, we have no plans to raise for the funds. Um, but we will work in collaboration, whether uh, within the group or uh, with uh, uh, with our platform on GIC to, to take advantage of any opportunities uh, that might come on the market. Well, that's uh, the big boss at Indian Hotels are checking in on ET now with the second quarter.